Hello, I'm Derek Pryor from Resulting, and today I'm in the Resulting STEM studio. Originally a chemical engineer, I moved on to specialise in industrial automation and then SAP business applications. I spent nearly 20 years at Gartner as an analyst focused on SAP. So, talking to SAP customers about best practices and research, uh, that's, what I, that's my background. But today I'm in the, um, the studio, and the real pleasure of talking to Stuart Brown, Managing Director of Resulting, about the importance of data management and data migration. Now, where best to start, Stuart? I mean, clearly the best place to start, we're at the start of an SAP project. What do we have to do to get it right for data migration, to get things going? Yeah, and it's not the most interesting topic. It sounds <laughs> like you fall asleep when you start talking about data, doesn't it? But, but I think that one of the issues with data for me is that it usually gets a big focus on an SAP implementation programme. There's a lot of focus on data cleansing and data mapping, ETL. Lots of tools are bought and lots of planning is done to get the data right. Uh, so by the time you go live, you've got a nice, crisp, clean set of data. Um, but then nobody thinks what's going to happen after that. So there's loads of emphasis on getting data clean, yeah. but hardly any emphasis on how to make sure data carries on being clean. Um, loads of emphasis on making sure um, data is consistent, there's no anom anomalies, but no emphasis on making sure data is policed and governed afterwards. And there are tools around, there's, uh, SAP have their own tools, you know, MDM, MDG and so on, lots of third party tools. But I'm not sure it's just a tool issue, this, this, is, a, this is a mindset issue, this is yeah. a, it's a philosophy rather than a tool. Okay, so master data, that's got to be key, isn't it? Yeah. That's really why we've got to get the business to own the master data, would you think? Yeah, and, and there's plenty of research around and reports around and case studies of the demise of businesses around where you can point that straight back to, to master data. Master data was the, was the, 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 uh, the root cause problem. Um, but data just doesn't create itself, does it? it? It needs to be created by people, it needs to be maintained by people. Um, on any big programme, you'll have a master, dist a master list of all the data objects. You have to, to do the data migration. I've walked into so many projects mid-build and said, OK, so do we know who's going to own each of these master data objects after go live? We know who's going to convert them, we know which programme's going to use to convert them, we know where in the cutover sequence they get converted, but nobody's thought of you almost get tumbleweed blown through the room when you ask the question, who's going to own the data? And we, probably over 10 years ago, we, we worked on a big retail um, programme where um, my first six or seven weeks there, I was told the data maintenance team would be doing this. Um, yeah, we'll leave that to the data maintenance team. And it took six or seven weeks to realise they were just mythical beasts. The, the, the programme, we had a running joke that they were, they were the data unicorns because they didn't exist. The programme was expecting people to manage data and assuming over there that would be handled but nobody had thought to go and define the organisation and actually nail it on people's chest to say you're owning customer master, you're owning material master, you're owning these fields on material master. Sounds like another real business issue for business execs and managers to own. Well it is when you think that um, if you have a business case and if your business case is supported by KPIs and if those KPIs come from your analytics solution and if the analytics solution is fed by transactions, and if those transactions are fed by master data, then it doesn't take a rocket scientist to work out that really bad master data means your analytics are terrible and means you can't measure your business performance, let alone justify your, your KPIs for your business case. So it's, I, if, I was a, if I was a CFO or a COO or a CEO or even a CMO, um, I'd, be, I'd take an interest in data, even though it's not that much of an interesting subject. I think you're right, Stuart. There's a lot, a lot of work there for everybody to do, and it's not at all obvious. I, just to add to that, I think one other thing, you probably agree with me, that many customers forget right up front. They need to decide how long they're going to keep their data for. Is it going to be one year, two year, three year? Because what I've seen is people end up with an archiving, ar data archiving mess. Mm -hmm. And this is so important when it comes to HANA, because if we're going to migrate an existing ECC system, the bigger the database we've got to bring across, the bigger the problem we've got. We're going to have to pay for more expensive hardware, and the business downtime is just going to be unacceptable. Yeah. Would you agree with that? So I would agree with that. Whenever the A word comes up, there's usually two responses. The first response is, we'll worry about that later. 
you know, we've, we've sized the system, it's big enough. Then a few years down the line when they realise that the system maybe may not be big enough, um, storage has been cheap over the last 10 years. Um, let's add some new storage. Um, now with people moving to the cloud, it's not as simple. And also with the advent, as you say, of, of S4 HANA, um, the time it takes to migrate data across and the cost of storage in, in memory environments is much higher. Um, and even simple things, if you want to run a more agile development process and you want to do a, a production copy back, back to your test environment to be able to, to test, we've talked about this many times in the past, running an SAP system copy can take 10 days for a really big system. If you archive, you can shorten it down. If you want to get into continuous integration and continuous testing and DevOps and Agile, you need to be able to do lightning fast system copies. So I think ar archiving needs to happen early and be planned early. Very good. Lots of pearls of wisdom there, Stuart. Thank you very much for your time. What I heard you say quite clearly is, yes, we've got to put the initial emphasis on cleaning up the data to get going. That makes sense. But I also heard you say master data. We have to focus on that. We've got to get data governance right data ownership right out in the business it's not something we can overlook and we also touched on the importance of data archiving to make sure we're not storing up our problem for later and we're making life much easier ourselves yeah. for our migration to Hannah. so thank you again Stuart and if you're interested in learning more about uh, data migration please do check out our website for more information and tips thank you